The String Quartet by Virginia Woolf. Well, here we are. And if you cast your eye over the room, you will see that tubes and trams and omnibuses, private carriages, not a few, even I venture to believe landaus with bays in them, have been busy at it, weaving threads from one end of London to the other. Yet I begin to have my doubts. If indeed it's true, as they're saying, that Regent Street is up, and the treaty signed, and the weather not cold for the time of year, and even at that rent not a flat to be had, and the worst of the influenza is after effects. If I bethink me of having forgotten to write about the leak in the larder, and left my glove in the train, if the ties of blood require me, leaning forward, to accept cordially the hand which is perhaps offered hesitatingly. Seven years since we met, the last time in Venice. And where are you living now? Well, the late afternoon suits me the best, though if it weren't asking too much. But I knew you at once. Still, the war made a break. If the mind's shot through by such little arrows, and, for human society, compels it, no sooner is one launch than another presses forward. If this engenders heat, and in addition they've turned on the electric light, if saying one thing does, in so many cases, leave behind it a need to improvise and revise, stirring besides regrets, pleasures, vanities and desires, if it's all the facts, I mean, and the hats, the fur boas, the gentlemen's swallowtail coats and pearl tie pins that come to the surface, what chance is there? Of what? It becomes every minute more difficult to say why, in spite of everything, I sit here believing I can't now say what, or even remember the last time it happened. Did you see the procession? The king looked cold. No, no, no. But what was it? She's bought a house at Malmesbury. How lucky to find one. On the contrary, it seems to me pretty sure that she whoever she may be, is damned, since it's all a matter of flats and hats and seagulls, or so it seems to be for a hundred people sitting here well-dressed, walled in, furred, replete. Not that I can boast, since I too sit passive on a gilt chair, only turning the earth above a buried memory, as we all do, for there are signs, if I'm not mistaken, that we're all recalling something furtively seeking something. Why fidget? Why so anxious? Sample complete. Ready to continue?